In this episode, we're thermoforming a bezel for my new Retro Arcade 2. I'll show you how to incorporate thermoforming into your design and then leverage the Vacuform, a state-of-the-art digital desktop thermoforming tool for great results. Stick around. In my shop, machines and tooling provide capabilities to produce some of the crazy mixed media prototypes that I come up with. That's kind of what we do. We solve challenges by being inventive and applying the right engineering process, or in most cases, the most creative process. It's a challenge that, like you, I find rewarding. The problem is that once you've done it, shared it, and mastered it, I'm looking for the next challenge. Often I create projects that force me to solve a new problem. In doing just that, I'm pushing myself to reinvent the look and design of my retro arcade handheld pushing it forward, making it modern and fresh, as well as providing a lot of engineering challenges. Sleek body lines, an arch display bezel, and original mixed media from the ground up. In addition to the design, I'm pushing the architecture, basically how it's put together to accomplish the design. It's been said that to the man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And while I'm a big advocate of putting in the effort before investing in new machinery, sometimes you'll get better and faster results with a new tool. Granted, the arch bezel could be milled from acrylic and polished to optical clarity, but another process is better suited for these kind of parts. I'm talking about thermoforming. While there's no shortage of thermoforming videos on YouTube, if you want better results, you're going to need more than just a standard shop vac. You'll want a vacuum pump that can evacuate the air fast and then pull a deep vacuum, getting a good impression before the plastic cools. That'll allow for the tight details to be captured in the material while it's still pliable. You'll need a high flow, high vacuum pump, and while there are professional machines available for thousands of dollars, there are only a couple consumer grade all-in-one solutions that can do this. One of the best desktop machines I found is the Vacuform. It's got a hybrid pump which quickly evacuates the air down to negative three PSI, then a secondary pump that kicks in to draw it down to almost negative 13. It's got an easy to use digital interface which simplifies the setup and automation. We'll get into the details later, but for now we need to set up a forming buck. Forming buck is the mold that will be used to form the heated plastic into a part. To do this, over in Fusion 360, I create a negative of the part, in this case, the bezel for the Retro Arcade 2. A few things to note design-wise are, one, be sure to prevent any undercuts in your design or you'll never be able to remove the part from the forming buck. Two, ensure any vertical walls have one to 3% draft to allow for the mold to be released, like kind of like a popsicle mold from the form. Three, add vent holes at any critical areas of your design to ensure the air can evacuate properly. Now there's a few other things to consider when forming larger objects, like what happens to the plastic when it's drawn into the form. When the hot plastic is pulled down onto the forming buck, the plastic thickness will change depending on your mold. The top of your buck will have the full thickness of the material. Then as it stretches down the vertical walls of your mold, it'll get thinner. As it comes into contact with your part, it cools and slows this phenomenon. Whether you're forming into a positive or negative buck will determine where the stretching and thin spots will be. In most cases you'll be good, but just know that as your designs become more complex, this is something to be aware of. For this part, we're good to go. The forming buck is milled on the shape oko from a block of Ren shape. Ren shape is a great high density modeling material able to hold great detail. You can think of it as a very dense particle board. Once that's complete, any vent holes are drilled into the model using my drill press. The model is sanded with 110, 220, and 600 grit sanding blocks to a perfect finish, ensuring that any remaining tooling marks are flushed out. This is critical as the hot plastic will capture any surface imperfections. And since the mold will be our bezel, we need it to be pristine. With the buck ready to go, the next step is to take it over to the vacuum form. Preparing the vacuum form, I place the material in the tray, ensuring it covers the seal entirely. Placing the top clamp, adjust the clamp so that the front lifts about a quarter inch. This will ensure compression of the seal against the material as it's clamped. Raise the plastic to the heating element where it's held by magnetic force. Configuring the vacuum form, you select the material and thickness and then start the heating process. Depending on the type of material and thickness, this time will vary, but don't worry, the machine will let you know when it's time to pull the mold. With the buck centered on the device, you pull the bar down to break the magnetic force, then proceed to push it all the way down, fully locking out the arm bars. The vacuum quickly evacuates the air, then switches into a deep pulling mode. You'll see the plastic form tightly onto the form, and if you don't, there, there could be something with the seals, or you'll need to go back once it's cooled down to confirm that the seal is fully seated and your buck is properly designed. For us, this thing looks perfect if it were the right material. The form is excellent in drawing into all the edge details of the design. Now the material is somewhere in delivery, and that's going to take another week or so. For now, let's move forward. 
So you might ask, with the bezel properly formed, the next part is finishing it off. And for that, we've got several holes for speakers and venting uh, to drill, as well as a button and D-pad ports. We'll need another model that we can use to hold the form on the CNC. The new jig modified in Fusion 360 from the Buck has a couple of holes for mounting to the work table, as well as some pockets for the through holes and milling operations. As this model surface quality is less important, we can 3D print this jig quickly. Next, I square the jig to the table and lock it down, then zero the work coordinate system out to the front left corner of the jig. Ready to go, I manually cut away some of the bezels flashing and then use double-sided tape to hold, hold it in place in the jig. For the cutout, I use a simple trace tool path on the edge profiles of the bezel flange, buttons, and D-pad. The tool was swapped out for a one millimeter drill and then the speaker and vent holes were milled. With that, the bezel is done and ready for the next step in assembly. Now if we only had the right material. The right material will be formed from a two millimeter smoke gray plastic to replicate the blackout bezel of the retro arcade. It's on the way, but for now the process works great. In the future, I'll share pics of the final bezel when the material comes in. As you can see, the vacuum form worked like a champ. It's easy to see how this machine can be leveraged for lots of unique parts that can take your projects to the next level. I hope this process was useful in seeing how parts can be thermoformed and then milled for precision applications. I'll be demonstrating more of its capabilities in the upcoming videos. Additional information on the vacuum form, the materials used in this video can be found in the description below. As always, leave comments below, do your thing, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too.